Yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Victor Obasui, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the alarming rate of suicide among students in the universities, colleges, and the tertiary institutions, precisely. Surprisingly, most schools don't disclose this information out of respect for the students and their families. But I think it's an area that one should um, take a deep look into. We tend to blame this most times on uh, mental health issues, which is not um, too far from the truth. But again, um, how are we as um, parents uh, preparing our kids or for university life? Most um, kids are sheltered all the way. The first time that they uh, attain their own independence is university. That's the first time most of them are leaving home. Uh, a lot of times decisions have been made for them all through. Uh, all the responsibilities have been taken care of them by their parents. This is the first time that they are actually having uh, to re be responsible for their own lives. Make decisions without their parents' direct input. Although a lot of them still uh, have to call home most times to ask the parents, what should I do? What should I do? Especially the first year. Truth is, a child that has ever been prepared for, for university life or a life, on, a life of them making decisions for themselves this can be quite um, overwhelming. It doesn't help also that um, a lot of us as parents, especially uh, immigrant parents, also put a lot of pressure on our kids because we want them to read certain courses. Uh, every parent wants their child to be a doctor, even if the child is not good in um, sciences. Uh, the next parent wants their child to be a lawyer, even if the child is not good in the arts. The other one wants their child to be an engineer, even if the child is not good in mathematics. So you find, apart from the pressure uh, of being alone for the first time, the child also has to deal with this un um, unnecessary pressure put on them by their parents to read particular course that they are not good at. This also, I think, um, adds a lot of pressure to what the kids um, have to cope with at, uh, at the university level. There are so many cases where we find kids that are doing extremely well. I'm talking about very high GPA, 3.5, there about. Uh, in the best courses, that you can think about, the best universities. Parents are financially okay, so it's not a matter of um, finance is the issue. Um, I have a case where that really made me decide to shoot this video. Because most times when you hear these things, they seem like numbers. It doesn't hit home. I had a patient not too long ago, final year student, GPA was um, more than 3.5, which means it was good. Final year, the boy decided to take his life. Went to 13th floor and um, jumped from there. May he so rest in peace. That was the first time it struck me that this could have been even my own relative. How will I feel if uh, part of the problem was so the decision that I made or the decision that I imposed on this person. Nobody wants to be responsible for another person's death. I would prefer to have the other person alive and uh, probably just be struggling through life than to be uh, than to live the rest of my life feeling guilty that I was responsible for the decision that uh, took the person's life. Even our own kids, 
I think the best we can do for them is guide them through the process of uh, cost selection and um, let them decide what they think they are good at based on what they are passionate about and take it to the next level. I don't think it's up to us as parents to impose on our kids that you must be a medical doctor, you must be a lawyer, you must be an engineer without critically putting into consideration if the child, if that is what the child really wants to do or that is what the child is good at. There are so many kids out there that academics is not their calling. Some of them might be sports. Some of them may not even be acad uh, academics, it may not be sport. Some people are, uh, some kids are just good with their hands. Plumbing, electrician, any of these things. Gone are the days when we all believe that uh, you have to be a medical doctor to succeed in life. Even entertainers these days, comedians, make a lot more money than medical doctors. And we all know it. So there are so many things that um, a child can do to succeed in life, especially with the uh, technological age that we are in today. There's no need to force your child to uh, take on a program or a course that you know they're not capable of uh, handling. It's just undue pressure they're putting on that child. Most parents do it out of ego. I want my child to be a doctor. I want my child to go to the best university in the world. It has to be an Ivy League university. We've seen cases of even celebrities these days paying for uh, their kids to get into Harvard and uh, most of the um, Ivy League universities. Some of them were paying over a million dollars. Some of them had to even pay uh, people to write the exams for their kids, to write the SAT exam for their kids. Why? Because they want their kids to go to the best universities. It's an ego thing for the parents. A lot of them don't even consider how that will impact on the child on the long run. If you really want your child to be a doctor, you want to, you want to answer, oh, my, I'm a doctor's father or my, I'm a lawyer's father, then education is never too late. Why don't you go and apply for those courses and write the exams? You can actually be the doctor and, or the lawyer instead of uh, forcing your child to be a doctor because you want to answer uh, doctor's father or doctor's mother. My dad had um, a friend back home that said he was either going to die reading law or he would die as a lawyer. The guy went back to school. He was almost uh, he graduated at uh, 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 over 60 years old. That was when he graduated from law school. He fulfilled his dream. He did not push his child to say, okay, you must be a lawyer because I want that in my portfolio as uh, the father of a lawyer. I also have another friend here. Uh, he said he wanted one of his kids to go to the uh, University of Toronto. Unfortunately, the kids decided U of T was not um, for them. So what did he do? He didn't force the kids that, okay, you must go to U of T or somebody will die. He uh, went and enrolled at U of T and uh, completed a one year, I think one or two years program there and uh, has this uh, a certificate today that, show, that shows that this is his last name. He graduated from the University of Toronto. I think that is the best way to do it. Instead of you forcing your child, if you must, then go and do it yourself. We all want to see our kids uh, succeed in life. True. But at the same time, we don't want to be the one burying our kids. You have to be alive to succeed. Let's understand that fact. The child has to be alive to succeed. A child that goes into university and takes his or her life, that whole dream of the child, the child being what you want the child to be, is already dead. So as parents, I think we should start from maybe when they are in grade 10, grade 11. Find out what they are good at and encourage it. The most important thing is for them to come out and be the best that they can out of their choosing profession. Not for you as the parent to push them into what they are not um, capable of handling. So I think I just thought I'd share this with you guys. At least um, let's do our own part.
the less pressure you have on the child, the less the number of um, suicide rate we can also have. School is stressful enough on its own. We don't want to add extra stress to this. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Victor Obasi. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. If there are tips that you think um, we could help, let's add it. Let's not blame everything on mental health. Peer pressure can be a huge part of this um, whole epidemic of suicide, high suicide rate among our kids. Thank you.